It's the first day of legal adult use sales in Connecticut, and we're here at the botanist to see how things are going. So tell me um, your feelings about the first day of legal adult use sales in Connecticut. You know, we're thrilled about it. We've had uh, a wonderful past few years serving our medical guests here, and we're excited to be able to expand access to more members of the community here, uh, not only in Montville, but in all of Eastern Connecticut, uh, as today's a history-making uh, history day for sure, with uh, adult use sales happening for the first time in this state. Sure. So for adult use, we have pre-rolls, we have whole flour, we have vapes, and then for the first time in the state of Connecticut, we also have gummies. So medical patients here have previously been able to purchase edibles. However, gummies have never been allowable for medical patients. So now for the first time in the adult use program, we have a couple different gummy options on our menu, uh, which is a first for the state. And what about taxation on the products? So uh, the taxes vary based on the municipality. So uh, this is actually a state, and when I compare to other states in our region, Connecticut was very logical and reasonable about the way they approach the taxes. Uh, so in other markets, we've seen higher taxes. Uh, here we feel the state did a good job in making sure that it's accessible for people uh, and not, not attainable. Can you compare and contrast the difference between the New York rollout of adult use and the Connecticut? Because New York only has one dispensary open, while Connecticut, for this first day, seems to have opened several locations. So I think something that Connecticut did that was really smart was that uh, they trusted their medical operators to be able to convert to hybrid sales who have already been in this industry. Uh, we've been receiving deliveries. We've been having transactions occur. So for our team, this is muscle memory. Absolutely, it's going to be uh, at a larger scale. And there's some new things we had to learn and train along the way. But we're kind of building on the foundation the state has had for years. Uh, kind of in comparison in New York, uh, I believe for the dispensary that opened there, that was their first time ever transacting. So, so many things they were encountering for the first time on that day, um, whereas our team's used to it now. It's just we have a larger uh, group of guests that we are able to serve. Unlike New York, Connecticut has managed to open several locations on the first day of legal adult use sales. So we started Fine Federal in 2018. We applied to the state of Connecticut. We won our license in December and we got our first dispensary open in June of 2019. We got our second one open in Connecticut in September of 2019. Then we opened in Stamford here in uh, February of 2022 and now adult use today in all three locations. Yeah, sure. Today's been busy. We've been averaging about 80, 85 transactions an hour, and that's been across all three of our locations. So it's been really busy with a steady flow, but also no traffic issues whatsoever. It's been, it's been a great day. The gummies have been flying off the shelf. So in Connecticut, gummies have not been available in the medical market. Um, and so gummies have been flying off. We had a limited supply, but per usual flower is king. And so in general, people have been buying, buying eighths, and it's been a pretty consistent you know, uh, across the board between all of our strains, honestly. Uh, sativas have been a little bit more popular than anything else, though. Where did you get the name Fine Fettle? <laughs> so there is a movie, the, Lo the Darkest Hour, about Winston Churchill. And in it, he says he's in Fine Fettle. And we looked it up, and it meant good health and good condition. And the reason why we picked it, ultimately, is because just what you asked. Somebody asks, and then they listen and they remember and then they never forget our name and we don't blend in with the rest. For us, we're here local from Connecticut. So to be sort of here is important and one of our core values is just to cherish our local communities because we've got to understand that we can't just be CVS Walgreens. We have to be fine fettle in Stamford, in Martha's Vineyard, in Newington. And so as we can be more sort of connected and specific to our community, I think we can be individualized and that gives us sort of a better customer experience with everyone. And that's really our goal at the end of the day because we're a customer service business. We're just honored to be a part of this industry and um, you know, part of this in our home state to change perception in New England, right? Because uh, you know, it's old school here and you know, so to, to, to change that perception and to do it in like a professional and real way is important to us. So it's, uh, it's exciting. I'm Deborah Borchart reporting for the Green Market Report from Uncasville, Connecticut.